Hi everyone, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this is a colour and chat. And this is a video, it's made for adults, it's not made for children or intended for children at all. So I'll get that out there. We are going to be finishing the picture we were doing in Gothic Fairies, The Color in Heaven. Um, we've only got a little bit left to go. We were doing Astrid. And we're going to be using the Neo Color 2s on the background. And we're going to be using the uh, a green gel pen on the gun and the bubbles. So let's go get started. First of all, how are you all? I hope you're all well and that uh, you're holding up during this uh, lockdown. Because I know we're all pretty much stuck in the house. Wherever we are in the world, so we've just got to bear with it and we'll be okay. We'll, we can get through this. It's just a matter of everybody just doing what they can, being sensible and looking after each other. So we're all good here. I'm, I'm fine. Paul's fine. Jennifer's great. The weather in the UK has been pretty good, so we've been able to get out in the garden the last few days, which is wonderful. So I've been taking Jennifer out and she's been playing in her sand pit. She's been colouring out there. We've been playing with the ball. Um, sometimes she wants to play on her own and then she doesn't want mummy interfering. She just wants mummy to watch. So I've got, I take out my a copy of Johanna Basford's Lost Ocean because I'm working on a very detailed picture in there with my fine liners and um, I work on that when I can which is nice and I might only do a little bit and then she'll want me to do something for her and I'll, I'll I just stop doing it and we uh, do what she needs and yeah it's all good so Yeah, we're all okay. Um, Paul managed to get out and do some shopping yesterday and today some food shopping. Because um, he doesn't drive, so he has to walk because I'm not going out. I'm trying to stay away from people because of my asthma. I don't want to make it worse. Or I had five chest infections last year. And uh, I'm trying to keep as well as I can. And I've got a cough and a sniffle but I feel amazingly well and I want to stay that way so Paul's been walking down to the shop he's got a granny trolley <laughs> and he's taking a list and he's he's uh, filling the, getting what he can and bringing it back in the trolley he's, he's done two days he, he'll, he said he might pop down and get some bread on Wednesday or something eBay's quiet which is understandable I'm not listing at the moment I have sold a few things mostly computer games because the post offices are trying to minimise their risk to their workers. They don't want to handle too many parcels. But people are ordering online and the government have said online retailers should carry on as normal. Because people are stuck in the house. They are bored. They're going to shop online. So at the moment Royal Mail are, as far as I know, in some places they've stopped taking parcels. But as far as I know... They're still doing it here. I was supposed to get a parcel from Hermes a couple of weeks ago. It never turned out. So I don't know whether the guy's ill. Or he's just decided I ain't doing this while well, this is going on. And But I have to contact the company and I keep forgetting. So I will have to do that this week. And just say, you can't see what I'm doing again. I'm doing this big bubble. And just say, look, I haven't received my item. Can you... have a look so mostly what I've been selling is um, video games I've sold a few I've got some to list that I bought last week before we went into lockdown and I've just got to I've got to check them see if they're worth listing individually clean them up photograph them test them all that good stuff I just haven't got around to it yet I keep saying I'm going to but do you know what I'm making this video instead tonight um, it's the first month I've actually made a loss on eBay. 
partly because I bought some stuff at the auction, including those video games. And yeah, that's the main reason. Um, and I haven't been listing as much because of this stuff going on and uh, it's not easy to do. Um, I will get back to it. I'm hoping the post office here is still taking parcels because I had two sales today and they're both parcel size. I have got it on 10 day dispatch though so I shall address it and our Paul will go down when he goes to get a loaf of bread in the week because he eats so much bread he'll need to go and get some and I said just go in and drop it off they'll either post it or they won't but I can still mark it as dispatched Um, but if it's a large letter, it's something that can go in the post box. I just uh, print off a label off the Royal Mail website and pull walks down to the box. So a video game goes as a large letter, he'll just go down and put it in the box for me. And that makes it a little bit easier, a little bit uh, better for everybody. So I found I've been reading a bit more. I'm rereading um, Andrew Cartmel's series, um, the Vinyl Detective series, because the new book is due out in May, and there's this book five. I've got all four. They tend to come out one a year, every May. And so far this week, I've read books one and two, and I've started book three. I'm about halfway through book three. I only started it today. I was just, sometimes I'm just in the mood to read if Jennifer's colouring or if she's watching TV. Like I said, sometimes she doesn't want me bothering her. I've read out in the garden when we've been out there playing. In fact, the other day I wanted to go out and colour and she actually handed me my book as if say, come out and read mummy and I'll play and you can read your book, which is really sweet. And I wanted to colour, so I took the book anyway. But, um, yeah, I would have coloured a lot more this month. I'm on, this is picture 12, I think. And this should, this will be finished. Um, whether or not I'll finish another one, I don't know. It is Sunday, so I've only got Monday and Tuesday to go. Because the one I'm doing in Lost Ocean is so very detailed. I'm not sure whether or not I'll actually finish it. Before the end of the month, there's a lot on it. But that's what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of days. Um... So you'll be watching this on a Monday, then you'll be watching my haul video possibly on Tuesday. And I have asked that if you watch that haul, if there's a book you want to see me colour from that's in that haul, let me know and I will colour in it. As always, I'm happy to oblige. Um, if you watch any of my hauls since January and my complete collection book, video if there's anything that you want me to to color in let me know and I'll, I'll certainly color in it it's always good to have input from you guys I do appreciate you're all out there watching and we need each other's company at this time I'm still working my way through new who I haven't watched Picard I'm on episode I'm on season four episode one which is the first one with Catherine Tate as Donna Noble after the Christmas episode she was in, The Runaway Bride. Um, which is the one with the adipose. So, I always love watching Doctor Who. I was watching the Christmas episode that predates that one, which was the Titanic episode, Voyage of the Damned, which had Kylie Minogue in it as Astrid. I mean, let's be honest, where else can you see Kylie Minogue running around the haze in Cardiff? Well, she wasn't really running, but she was certainly in the haze in Cardiff, you know, it's mad. 
Camelogue in the haze in Cardiff. You've got to love it. And they've used the haze quite a few times as uh, locations for Doctor Who. They used it in the very first episode, Rose, as a shopping centre where her mum goes. And they've used um, what was Howell's department store many times as a backdrop, Queen Street. The church in The Runaway Bride is in the haze. They don't just use um, Cardiff, they've used Newport. Blink was filmed at a place called Fields House. And they've used the uh, St Willard's Cemeteries, Cemetery on Bays Lake Road, or, which is classed as the Gay, several times uh, for various episodes whenever there's a cemetery. I think they've also used Cate's in Cardiff. Um, they also used uh, St Willard's Cemetery in uh, an episode of Sherlock, when uh, after the Sherlock's alleged death at the hands of Moriarty, that was, uh, if you watch that episode, that was filmed in Newport. So they do film quite a lot in the area, obviously casualty films in the area as well. They've actually filmed at, uh, in the street by my office a couple of times because it's a, a road, but it's not a main road. The main road runs parallel to this road. And they've, they've uh, filmed in there a couple of times and uh, so I, I, when I watch it I'm like, oh look, there's my office in the background. It's always quite funny when you see somewhere you know on a place. I mean, Casualty especially, they they film a lot in Newport and Cardiff. And in one episode, one of the older episodes now, I mean, it's a few years old. Um, they filmed this lady sitting having a drink upstairs in Newport Market. And then she started to come down the stairs, or she ran down the stairs, and she slipped and fell. And when she landed, she landed, she landed in Cardiff Market, which I thought was rather clever of her. So the battery's run out, so I was going to change it. it won't be. A... Okay, hopefully this battery will last long enough for us to do a bit with the um, things. So we've done that, and now we're going to use the. If I can get them open, and you'll cut the twos. I haven't used them before, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm not going to be very good at this. Um, so we're going to do orange and yellow and red sky background. I like the way they go on this paper, mind. I mean, I don't know what this is like. How thick it's got to be, or how heavy you've got to be, or how light you've got to be. But I'm just going to... Do some yellow. Like I said, I've never used these before. They are like crayons, aren't they? I know they call them water soluble pastels, but uh, they feel like crayons. They smell like crayons as well. And this battery's gone. I'm going to have to find a battery that's not dead. Right. I've got four batteries for this camera and I can't find them. I've got two. I've got a bit of charge on this one but not much. So I'm just going to carry on while I charge up another battery. Oh, it's very annoying. Because... I don't know how long this has got to last. Not very long, I don't think. And then... I'm going to have to hopefully have... to have a look at the other one and hopefully there'll be enough 
charge in it. So I don't know how well you are actually supposed to fill the gaps in on this. I don't know how well it smooths out when you paint. But I'm not too worried about this yellow. Now I'm going to go around in orange and hopefully by the time this battery actually clicks off we might have a fairly charged battery. I don't like leaving them on overnight. Right, I've been charging it up for a little while. Um, so I'm just going to carry on putting this on. I've swapped them over. Hopefully we've got enough to keep going for a little while. And where did that other one go? Oh, it's right in front of me. I'm a bit dull tonight. I don't know what's wrong with me. I think it's because it's getting late. I've just been watching Doctor Who while I've been waiting for the, the battery to charge. This red is really red. That's a bit crazy. I mean, my first time using these might be a bit of a mistake, but uh, it's all about learning. It's all about doing new things and trying things. So, like I said, the other battery's charging if this one runs out. Like I said, I've been watching Doctor Who. And I'm on the one that um, Donna and the Doctor visit Pompeii, where they meet a character played by Peter Capaldi, who of course would go on to play the Doctor himself. And he, Peter Capaldi was a very big fan of the Doctor Who back in the original series, and he used to write letters to the Radio Times and they'd be published and I remember when they announced him as um, the Doctor they actually um, showed one of his letters on the announcement program and I was just watching this thinking he was probably just happy to be in Doctor Who as a character you know um, and probably at that point thought I'll never play the Doctor even though Doctor Who has always had a chance of, um, it's always recycled actors, it's used more than one. I believe Colin Baker was in one as a character before he was cast as the Doctor, and Karen Gillian was in the same episode as Peter Capaldi, the Pompeii one. Like I said, I'm sure Rory was in one. Um, the Cybermen one, the first, uh, the second Cybermen one that was set at Canary Wharf. No, the first one. And Freema Eggerman was in the Simon at Canary Wharf one. It was explained away as one of her cousins. And they've, they've always done that. They've done that through the years where they've had characters played by other characters, you know, by actors and then they've brought them back as a companion or as the Doctor himself, so it's not unusual for that to happen. Right, I don't put any more on. We're going to see how bad this looks. We'll use okay, number three, because number three, it's the biggest one. Just make sure it's clean. And we'll just start at the top. How's that? It's not looking too bad actually. I mean, as I said, I've not used this before. I'm not worried about it going right to the edge of the paper. Just do it down 
here first. We'll see how it goes. So I've got to be honest, I have ordered a couple of books today. I don't know when they'll come. They are, they have said the middle of next week, I think. You know, towards the end of the week, sometime in April. So, I still don't know if there'll be a uh, current book haul at the end of the month. It really depends on how many books I actually get. Um, and I ordered the, the Unicorns book, Jade Summer, which I'm assuming it's got Unicorns 1 and 2. I've already got Unicorns 2, but I don't mind having another copy of it in grayscale. And I ordered one. It was funny because... One of the groups I'm a member of is a Jack the Ripper group. And there's actually now a Jack the Ripper colouring book. And somebody posted it and I thought, oh my God. And I'm, I'm not sure what to make of it. It's a bit disconcerting, to be honest, that there's a, doc, there's a, a Jack the Ripper colouring book. You know, with everything that he did. That they've made a Ripper colouring book. I'm just going to go and get some water to dip this into. I won't be a second. Don't know what happened there. I think the water was getting a bit, a bit stuck. It's coming out now. So, so I ordered that one because I thought it'll be interesting to do, have a look at, maybe do a flip through. I think it's going to be quite like a horror kind of book. It might not be very good. It's on independent publishing, so it's Create Space, the UK Create Space. I thought it might be quite interesting to have a quick look and uh, see what it's like and if it's uh, gruesome. I'm not one for sensationalising the Jack the Ripper story because when it comes down to it, he did murder five people at least. Whether you think all canonical, canonical five, as they call them, were Ripper victims or not. He was reputed to have killed five women and okay, yes, they were prostitutes. But you've got to remember that in the Victorian age, women had no rights. Everything they owned belonged to their husband or their father. And if their husband disowned them or divorced them, for whatever reason, I'll go back over that. They were left with nothing. And that's what happened to a lot of these women. They were divorced for once, for whatever reason, and it may well have been partly their fault if they were into alcoholic, you know, they were alcoholic or whatever. Um, and sometimes I'm probably right in saying that some of the husbands were just fed up with their wives and used any excuse to get rid of them. But of course, any wealth they brought into that marriage became their husbands. When they left the marriage, they had nothing, they had no rights. Not like today, whereas if you divorce a man, you could possibly get half of everything, whether it was yours to begin with or not, unless you have a prenup. So it, it's a very different time and it's a very scary time, to be honest. Because women were, they had no rights at all. If you didn't have a man to look after you, as horrible as that sounds with, by today's sensibilities, you were on your own. If you couldn't get a job in a factory or a, you know, something like that, you had no way of making money or getting a bed for the night. The only thing you could do was sell the only asset you had. Which in their cases was their bodies. Many of them had normal jobs as well, like selling trinkets and that they made. But that didn't always pay the bills, especially when times were tough. Uh, one of them would go hop picking, but it was a bad year for hops. So they came back with their 
male partner, I'm not married, but the person they shared a bunk with. And, you know, they didn't have enough money for beds and so they'd go out and sell themselves to try and get enough money and half the time, because their lives were so hard, they would uh, get drunk. So they'd get the price of a bed from either selling their wares or selling their body or working in a factory, whichever it was they, they did. But then their lives were so horrible that they they would then drink themselves into a stupor and then they'd have nowhere to sleep so they'd have to go back out onto the streets to try and get some more money for, for a bed. And it, it's hard to imagine that way of life. There are still people who do that because they have no other way of making a living. But in those days it was far more common, far more common. I know you haven't been able to see what I've been doing but it's a bit streaky. But I actually quite like the effect, it looks really good. I quite like the these new colour twos and I think with a lot more practice I quite like the, the flamey effect it, it's given it. It hasn't buckled the paper too much, it's not too wet, so it, you know, it's a bit, a bit crackly, but I really quite like that. So we're finished, we're going to zoom out, it looks patchier on the picture than it actually does on, in real life, but there we are, we've finished Astrid, so whew, that will be our last colouring chat for March. Um, like I said, once you've seen my book haul, let me know what you want to see me colouring next and I will happily colour in that for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video. She turned out okay. She wasn't as brilliant as I was hoping. Her skin's a bit too dark, but I quite like the effect. Um, leave me a comment down below. I will do try to answer all comments. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And to those of you who are a subscriber, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys.